Hey everybody, welcome to the very first episode of Lash Talk About It podcast and I'm your host Lizzie, also known as Lizzie Lash Me. This podcast is about everything lashes, business, lifestyle, and everything in between. This series is made to uplift the lash community, so this is the perfect podcast for you whether you're an OG lash girly or just a beginner lash tech. And today we have a very, very special guest, one of my lash sisters. We have the beautiful Deluxe Beauty, also known as Deza. So cheers to that. Cheers. Thank you so much for having me, Lizzie. Thank you for coming. So, who is Deluxe Beauty? So, hi everyone. Um, My name is Deja. I'm a 26-year-old entrepreneur, the owner of Deluxe Beauty LLC as Lizzie introduced, and I've been doing lashes for, oh my gosh, 2019. So that is five years. Is it five? November will make five years. So November of 20, uh, November of this year will make five years. So I've been having my lash business since um, right before COVID had hit. Um, I took a lash course 2019 summer in June, it was a group lash course, and I practiced throughout the entire summer, just working on my craft, trying to perfect it, using um, family members, friends, whoever would let me lash and practice on them. And then by five months later, November of that year, I was launching my own business. I had quit my, all of my jobs. I was still in college, so I was finishing up my final semester of college at that point, and I was taking an internship, but Outside of that, I quit my retail job and I was a full-time lash tech. I love that. I love your story because I know you're a perfectionist because you practiced for like five months before even launching and jumping out the gate and doing like paying clients. Yes. I practiced on two people and just started charging. But that's how it gets though. Sometimes you just got to wing it. I was just winging it. But it's nice to see somebody who actually like, you know, put some preparation into it. Yes. And both ways are, you know, really good ways to jump out the gate with your lash business. So I love that about you. So um it built my confidence too. I feel like that is very important. So mm-hmm. just for being sure of your art and knowing that you are going to execute and produce, you know, quality work. And it just like I said, it helps the confidence, especially in an industry where as though you are creating, you are beautifying women and just helping, you know, just helping the confidence of other women. Like you want to just be sure of that. But also, like you said, learning a new craft, it's not going to be perfect. So you kind of just got to throw yourself out there and get the hang of it then. So both approaches are definitely, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if you're going to sell anything, sell a service, sell a product, the confidence is needed. Like I used to fake my confidence. Like I used to fake it till I make it like, oh, I know what I'm doing, even though I didn't really know what I was doing but you really knew what you were doing. So that's where that confidence came from. But I feel like um, a lot of lash techs struggle in their business because they're not truly confident in what they do. And when you're confident, it shows and the client trusts you. So it makes it easier to, you know, sell your service because you're truly confident in what you do. You know what you're doing. So I love that about you. And um, I can't help but witness the transformation of you throughout the years. I've noticed your growth, mind, body, soul. So you're looking happy and healthy. Tell me a little bit about your transformation, because I know it definitely was a big thing. Yes, it was such a big deal. And that my initial transformation with fitness and health and just really taking my you know, my health and wellness more seriously, that started in 2021, um, end of summer, beginning of fall. And my initial motivation was my birthday. My birthday is in January. And I always like to tighten up or even just start preparing for what my birthday plans are mm-hmm. at the end of summer. I'm like, all right, I got four months and then it's my birthday. So that year, 2021, my motivation was my birthday. And I've never been athletic. I I danced when I was younger, but mm-hmm. I had no real background of, of being like active or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Like seriously. So once I started working out, I started with a trainer and I'm like, let me just see how this goes, you know. Um, and it was an investment and business had started to slow down around that time. So I had more time to actually focus on myself and prioritize mm-hmm. 
my health. So once I took the risk, made the invested investment with the personal trainer, I was I'm not gonna lie, my first couple of sessions, I'm like, all right, I'm not coming back here for this. <laughs> I like, felt that way when I trained with somebody. It's so tough. Initially. Oh my god! I'm like people do this like all the time for like, fun. Change their whole body. Like I couldn't. You couldn't tell me that that this was the process and this was the journey. But um, I just stuck it out again. My birthday was my motivation, and my whole motto around that time was I'm giving up happy hour for the gym. I love a drink. Mm. I love some food. <laughs> so that was my whole motto, and that got me through. A good, yeah, four months with my trainer. And by the time my birthday hit, I was a pound smaller than my goal weight. So really? I like exceeded my goal weight. And I was just, nobody could tell me anything. Yeah. <laughs> so did you see that? Um, I know a lot of people that have like weight transformations. They feel like, you know, people see the weight off of them, but like they don't feel like different. Did you feel different? Like you were feeling yourself by your birthday? Yes. By my birthday, I had definitely... <clears throat> felt different even before then like even the three month mark fit clothes fit differently mm -hmm. um i was i started to look different probably in like two and a half months so that also kept me going throughout my journey like i when you can see the results i feel like that's what keeps you pushing right but some people commit so much time and effort and when they can't actually see the see the difference that will mm -hmm. discourage them to keep going right but i think since i did see the, a difference um, pretty early on and I gave myself that whole time frame mm -hmm. so after a month I wasn't expecting to be like this whole different size or weight so I gave myself a lot of grace the four months and by my birthday I hit my goal yeah I mm -hmm. love that and I feel like it's the same with lashes it's the same with anything because yeah. I tell like my students all the time like in the beginning your work is going to be kind of ugly like you're not going to love your work but you know if you stay consistent and it's only if you stay consistent you will see results like if you take a picture of your first client and you mm -hmm. take a picture of your 10th client you will see those results so i love it and like throughout your journey your um transformation journey did you ever like doubt yourself i know it's not like an easy thing like we saying it like it's easy exactly. but no, no, it's no, no, really no. not it's like a men it's a mind thing so like did you ever doubt yourself you know what to be honest i I really can't say that I did. And I can usually be in other situations. I can be worrisome. I can be anxious about an outcome, but that must have really been meant for me because I was not discouraged. Like I said, those first couple sessions, they were just tough. And that kind of made me feel like, dang, can I really go through with this? But I personally felt like I was, I was seeing progress fast, but I was really locked in. Like I was eating completely different. My diet had changed. Um, I was consistent with working out. So I think I put all the right energy into it. So it left, I, I really didn't have a reason to be doubtful of how things were going to play out, you know, right. once I stayed the course. But if you're even slightly not locked in with that journey, it can easily like throw you off or you can question like how things are going to, how your results will look. So I think, like I said, I was committed once I first started. So that helped that like ease any doubt that I had on how things were going to be. I love that. Yeah. And yeah. you had the goal. So it's like sometimes when you have a goal, like it's just tunnel vision, mm -hmm. tunnel vision. So how do you incorporate your new lifestyle into your business life? Because... I feel like being a lash artist, we are human, but it's like when you have clients, um, it's hard to set like the boundaries. It's hard to, you know, make a certain, you know, it, I want to say it's hard, but it takes a lot of discipline to really follow the schedule that you'll make. Like sometimes I make a lot of new schedules. I'm like, you know, I'm only going to work these days. Or I'm only going to work these hours. And sometimes we don't even follow our own rules. So what does a day in the life look for you? look like for you so especially um early on when i was on a tight schedule with my trainer now i'm more flexible i can work out when i want i may work out later or earlier but at that time my gym was 10 minutes from my last studio mm -hmm. so i was working out in between clients and i was serious about both of those aspects of my life so the schedules kind of intertwined and they just worked so i feel like if you're putting 
if you're wholeheartedly, you know, working towards multiple things at once, they're going to align to where as though you can accomplish both. You can make, you can prioritize your health, but then also still prioritize business as well. So at that right. time, I feel like it definitely was um, a great balance. I honestly had, like I said, things were slowing down at that time. So I actually had, I had more availability to where mm-hmm. as though I was able to maintain a consistent schedule with both, right? Um, with both parts of my life, but when things do get busy, fitness you can always, it's only an hour a day, so that's that's the key. That's what the, that's the reminder with like just prioritizing just some self care time. It's only takes an hour to get an effective workout, and if they some right. of my home workouts are thirty minutes. If I'm pressed for time, I wake up an hour and a half earlier to get a quick home workout in shower then head to my last studio so um it's it's not really any excuses with, right with that so i think it's easy to incorporate fitness and working out and just being active into your lifestyle regardless of if you're an entrepreneur if you work you can incorporate a little bit of that time into your day yes and i've seen you post even for the last girlies like you were in your studio and you were doing like lunges or something yeah. so what's some workouts for the last girlies that they could do in between clients like on a little break literally lunges are my go-to because you with lower body and leg workout leg workout leg workouts and the booty workouts that we love um you can do them anywhere without weights. I think the video you're referring to, I had my water bottle mm-hmm. in my hand or something like that. And I was sitting in my last studio. I was wrapping up for the day. And I'm like, I don't have to run to the gym or go home right now. I can just knock my workout out here. So once I leave, I'm done for the day. Mm-hmm. But lunges, I highly recommend. Um, some squats. You can always bust out and do some squats at any time. And any type of jumping exercise that's good for cardio that helps your legs as well and tone it. But so like jump squats or if you have a jump rope, that's a, that's a quick and I love easy. jump rope. Jump rope is like <laughs> that workout. And it, it's a full body workout. It's cardio, strengthen those legs. So jump rope. And what else would I recommend? You can bust out a core workout anywhere. So we love our abs. Right. So a core workout, some standing marches, or if you do have a mat or a towel in your studio space or wherever you're working from, um, lay that out and just do some ab or core workouts on the floor yeah mm-hmm. it we it really is nothing to really make time like because lately i've been making time and the other day like i'm like let me just enjoy the neighborhood while i was on a break with my clients i'm like let me just walk around and see you know and it really like makes you feel good too like how does it make you feel like does it energize you for your business does it you know it definitely is it does give me a boost of energy especially it's 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 funny because my schedule of working out has changed throughout the past couple of years. So when I initially started, I was working out in the evenings. So it didn't give me the energy like physically at the start of my day because I was working out later. But I was excited to work out, so that kept that kept me pumped throughout the day. Like, all right, I can't wait to get to the gym. Um, it makes you feel productive. Like I'm yeah. wasting all day. I'm hooking my girls up. I'm doing my clients, and then after this, I get to go work out for an hour. Like that's just a perfect productive and just fulfilling day for me. Right. So when I work out in the morning, now my schedule is I'll usually work out earlier now. So before clients, I'll work out and it definitely physically gives me a boost of energy. Like, all right, I'm up, I'm ready for the day. I'm ready to take on all my clients and my workout is done. I crush my workout. So now I can take over the rest of my day and I just feel, again, confident. I know that I've been working and it's just rewarding. It really yeah. is. Mm-hmm. Cause we know how it feels to be like glued to the chair, especially you were working during COVID, right? Yeah. Like you know, after we were, you know, and it's like it was business was booming at that point. So exactly. it's like being glued to your chair for all those hours a day, like it take a toll on you. Like yes. it takes a toll on you. And I love being like booked and busy, but now I feel like I've cut down my clients um, because I want to enjoy my day. Like you don't want to just be literally stuck to the chair like it's not a good feeling so speaking of being like stuck to the chair you know passive income is really really good yes. for like lash tags beauty providers honestly anybody though yes so what's some streams of passive income that you recommend and some that you already have okay so my current thing that i still continue to push is my fitness ebook um and ebooks are a lane are a, 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 a passive ebooks are 
an option for any lane for mm -hmm. passive income. And with my resources from Lash and like graphic designers that I follow from my Lash page, I'm like, well, you can also help me with my fitness journey and help me put that into a book and create a product to sell to people, Lash Techs, other women that's starting their fitness journey, other entrepreneurs, period. It's a guy that's suitable, that's suited for all all people. Right. And um, ebooks are definitely a top um, stream of passive income. And I did the devil in the Airbnb business a couple of years ago. I remember ago. that. How yeah. did it go? The Airbnb, once I ended my lease, that's when it really started to get tricky. Like um, other people who were doing Airbnb at that time, they, the law started to get different. They mm -hmm. started, uh, Airbnb started to tax more, more extra fees. So people just felt like they would be better off, you know, rent, getting a hotel or, you know, having to stay using another source of um hospitality than like using an airbnb so but my particular journey dealing with people it was a whole nother lane of customer service than like dealing with lashes in person how like can you <laughs> elaborate because i mean it was a point in time where i feel like airbnb was like a big trend and i even used to stay at airbnbs a yes. lot and I literally had Airbnb courses, was literally about to start an Airbnb, like, but I didn't. I don't know what it was. Like, I was like a little bit nervous with, you know, everything starting to change. Yes. I feel like at that time I kind of jumped in later. Mm -hmm. But I want to know, like, how was it really like from somebody who really had an Airbnb? Because I had a couple friends and it was like, yeah, it was like, it was a lot. It was definitely a lot to say the least. Mm -hmm. And I even went as far as having like a ring camera to hopefully that would deter, you know, the rowdier guests or the unpleasant guests from creating a mess in your space or damaging the furniture, but that but that really didn't stop them. So it was it was a lot, but it was definitely a learning experience. Like I had um, you know, some messy stays and it was a quick turnover. So once someone stays, you have to immediately mm -hmm. clean the things out, change the sheets, and re reorganize and set the house back up for another stay. Right. So when there was like a messy guest or um, someone who stayed that didn't take out their trash and things like that, it was extra. It it just it just calls for extra time spent cleaning up for the for the next guest. Right. So, Were you the one doing the cleaning or you had like a crew? I did have a crew. Mm -hmm. And then at some point, if the turnover was too fast, then I would jump in and have to be down there sooner than like the cleaning. Right. Who was helping me clean, I would have to be down there before them. So um, you're, it was definitely was a business that I was involved in more than I wanted to be. Right. Just because it was demanding. Like I said, the turnover rate was fast, especially for weekends and the summertime holidays. So... It, it was definitely a stream of income where though I was involved in it more than I did want to be. And the guests were unpredictable. Yes. And also just random things happening that the host, the Airbnb host can't control the fire alarm going off or the carbon monoxide detector, the batteries running out. Now your clients is like, it's three in the morning, the alarm's going off. They're taking a star away from my rating. So now I have to try to, you know, offer them an extended checkout stay just mm -hmm. you know, accommodate them so you always you're dealing with people at the end of the day yeah so anything can kind of go wrong you hope for the best but random stuff come up it's a whole it's it was a house so mm -hmm. things di different random things will happen but i definitely am still grateful that i got to experience dealing with customers in that capacity because then it makes me feel like i can there were customers in, in right. capacity. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's crazy. And um, when we talk about passive income, I think that's why, like, right now, everybody's leaning toward the digital products, like yes. the ebooks. I love my digital products because it's like, you can go on vacation. You don't have to, you know, of course, my passive income is also like supplies, but I don't have to ship anything out. You get the download, you know, um, I, I like that because it's you no it. cleanup with that. Like no. you don't have to, cause even honestly, like selling lash supplies or selling a product. When I say USPS is probably like one of my biggest enemies. Mm -hmm. Like it, during COVID, they did not send out probably over 50 orders. Like, can you imagine that and having to repack them and losing money off of your inventory? So 
I definitely love the digital products era that we're in right now yes. because it's just as easy as a download. So how do you feel about like your digital product, your ebook versus like, I know you do like personal training in person. So yes. which one do you like enjoy so, more? I love my ebook because it's an all inclusive guide. So even if you choose to not take personal training classes with me, my ebook still is equipped to help you reach your results and your, get, get your results and reach your goals with fitness. I have my eating habits um, to lose weight or gain weight properly. And my favorite go-to workouts that I'll still incorporate into my sessions to this day. So just my favorite workouts, um, like I said, my eating habits and just, it's a piece of motivation to help people along your fitness journey. Mm -hmm. So I, I really, my ebook will always hold a special place in my heart and I'll always incorporate it. And I share it with my personal training clients complimentary. Now in the fitness sessions, I love to see my clients going hard in the gym, especially since I know I've been there in their space of just learning, trying something new, taking a risk, being unsure, but they show up so motivated, so ready to work and so ready to hit their goals. And I feel like me early on, I was just not performing how they were right. when, when I first started. So I just love to see them, me being able to implement a workout for them and seeing them crush it is just, it's no feeling like that. Yes. So I love seeing my God purchased always. And I know that there was a, I was transparent in my God about my exact journey. So I know the results are promised for my God. And with my personal training clients, I know you have to also put the work in to get right. the results. So to see them doing that, and nothing beats that that feeling. Right. So they they really go hand in hand, honestly. Mm -hmm. So um, I just I just love it. You need the ebook, and you also need to be in the gym putting the work in as well. Right. Yep. And it's nice to see like them actually doing it. Yes. So are some of your clients crossing over? Like, do your lash clients want to get trained by you? Do you, do you get gain some lash clients from doing the personal training? So it's funny because I have had a couple clients who started out as lash clients that now work out with me. Now my fitness, and since that came first, it's kind of, it usually goes that way. Like lash clients mm -hmm. went to work out opposed to fitness clients coming to get their lashes done. So I definitely feel like the crossover is more so, it was a, you were my, initially my lash client and then you became my fitness client. Right. So, um, you know, they see me working out, they see me in my workout outfit. So they, they, they see me in person. So again, they trust me with their lashes. They trust me that I, you know, really know what I'm talking about with the gym. I've had two different personal trainers. So it's just that trust from them being my clients and being with me for years. And then that transfers over to them being loyal to me and my right. other services and my other lanes and avenues that I'm into. And I feel like it's really easy to already sell to like your existing clients for some reason, because they already love you. Like my clients, they don't really, you know, they don't question my product. They yeah. just be like, I need the lash shampoo. I need this. Oh, you're using this. Give, give me this. They like after their lash appointment, they come upstairs and be like, Lizzie, what can I buy? I just want to buy something. And I'm like, you don't need anything else. Like you already have all the aftercare. But I feel like. It's just so easy to sell to your, you know, people that are already your clients. Exactly. Um, and that's why you just have to nurture the client um, because that's just reoccurring money as well. But it's also that trust, that they relationship. Trust. You don't get that from somebody who you don't trust. You know, if I don't trust you, I'm not going to, you know, try to purchase everything. No. So it's like that just shows the amount of trust that your clients have with you to even let you train them. So even and, with me and you, mm -hmm. I've brought your... I wanted to touch on this when we were talking about the digital products. I worked one of your ebooks and I would come get my lashes done and we, we would talk, we would both share yeah. things, we would mm -hmm. drop gems on me. And any questions that I had, you would share, be transparent with. But which ebook was it? I think it was. Was it? I, I remember, yeah, yeah. Overlooked the summer <laughs> book. Yeah. I worked that ebook and I'm like, even though I knew that if I needed, if I had a question or if you. Mm -hmm. would, you would share anything with me, but I'm like, no, I want to see, I'm going to first support her. Mm -hmm. She's my lash tech and I know she knows what she's talking about. And I want to have a physical copy. I feel like that helps you focus and take your own notes right. and from it. Maybe our lash conversations, that, not that they go on one, one end or the other, but I'm in the moment. Right. I'm just taking mm -hmm. it in at that moment. And maybe I go home and be like, dang, what was Lizzie saying? Right. But having a physical copy of 
your gems mm -hmm. is different. So I'm like, I have to grab the ebook. Yes. I love that. So we're going to switch gears a little bit. Okay. So you've been in the lash industry for five years, you said? Yes. What do you think has changed within our industry and what do you miss about it? So I feel like lash extensions were always a luxury. Mm -hmm. Like they were, uh, they've been a luxury, but I feel like when they were still, before it became like more saturated, it was like a luxury that you still needed. So yes. it was a necessary luxury. Whereas though, now in these times, the climate is different as far as, you know, people just trying to really prioritize their services and where and how they spend their money. I feel like it's definitely more obvious that it is a luxury now. Right. So I I think I do miss um, people just always wanting to have lashes and feeling like it was still a necessary part of their beauty routine. Mm -hmm. And I feel like sometimes people can forget about the fact that with lashes, you don't need anything else. Right. You don't need makeup. Mm -hmm. You just need some lip gloss, your lashes popping, and you just look, you have a done look to you. The lashes are the makeup. The lashes Literally, are Literally, like, if you have a good lash, a good brow, that's the makeup. You're done. Like, you look good. Your your face is beat. Like, you just, lashes to the do. So, I think I miss that culture of lashes. And I feel like now, um, people are just kind of freestyling you know, choosing which services they want to invest in, which is fine. Right. But I do feel like that has been different in the lash industry. Would you agree with that? Yeah, they've been looking at us. Like, I feel like <laughs> they, like, put us at the bottom now. They're like, lashes are not, you know, and I feel like it's because of the clusters or the strips. You know, they're getting more innovative with that. Like, yes. I've seen a lash cluster kit and it got all the lumps that we use like it, they got a map into it i'm like oh like this is where they're going because you know of course we're like in a recession yes. so people are trying to save money but i think there's some girls that always know like i'm gonna be that person i'm gonna always get my lashes done and so yeah so it's like it's different people but i feel like they cut out lashes quick maybe because we were like i don't know I don't know. I don't want to say. I feel like the price you pay for lashes, it really makes sense, it makes though. Sense. Mm -hmm. Because when you break it down and how long lashes last, like people will pay that for a face of makeup for exactly. one day. And it's like, I don't know why, like, we we got to take, like, the bed and the stick. I don't know. This is a time to really, and I feel like you do a great job at this always, of just standing out and always branding yourself and always delivering quality. Thank so, you. That's what's important, especially in these times. You mm -hmm. have to continue to set yourself apart. So even when lashes were, everyone was overbooked and or booked and busy and things like that, you always stood out. So now when things are changing, you're still that lash brand that's standing right. out. So mm -hmm. you are prepared for any type of adjustments in the industry. And that's, in, and that's important. Yeah. And it's all about like... I don't really like change, but you got to change within the industry. And I feel like being in this industry, I've been, this is my seventh year lashing. Wow. So, um, like when you see different changes, you got to just, as an entrepreneur, you got to roll with the punches. So Literally. you got to stay on top of it. Like if there's a trend, I feel like I got to stay on top of it a little bit. If you want to keep the ball rolling, you always want to be, you know, at the top of those trends, the top of the, you know, whatever you see is popular within your industry, I feel like. It's good to stay relevant. It's, and I study lashes. Like, I always study lashes. Like, from the beginning to now, I learn something new, I swear, every day. Like, lashes is just ever-changing like that. So I study my industry. I study what's popular. And I feel like that really helps, too. That goes a long way with, like, you know, keeping it keeping up it. to date. Because if, you, if I was to just stay the same as I was even four years ago, like right. it's not going to hit the same right now. Like if I keep doing the same thing I was doing four years ago, it's not going to work for me. So that just reminds yeah. me of a question for you. Mm -hmm. What talking to a lash tech who maybe is new to the game or has been in the industry for a while now, what is a move that you would always make to just like put you back in the um, position with like a great position with your business like what's a risk what's an investment what's something that you feel like is going to guarantee you have a positive outcome on your business if you do for it? a lash tech to invest in yes 
Oh, you got to invest in your marketing. Okay. So um, I wouldn't even say like go and buy the most expensive products. I would say invest in your marketing. That's one thing that I've always been like not scared to do. Okay. Whether it was like, I feel like I'm not big on this now. I'm actually kind of changing. So I used to be big on like pictures and videos. And then I got into like a lot of spending a lot of my money on graphics. And mm -hmm. now I see a lot of people, you know, coming out with the same type of graphics and I feel like it's not catching my eye. So I got to change the marketing and now I'm back investing into like the videos, you know, the reels was popping. So it's like marketing is always going to take you there. If you just get creative with it, okay. I feel like don't be scared to invest in the marketing. Cause I used to get a lot of clients off of like, they would be like your graphics, like your page, like how you market it is crazy. I don't think it's your service. I don't think like, I think somebody that does bad lashes can get really, really far by just marketing themselves the right way. Cause people fall in love with you, like not really the service. Like exactly. I feel like clients, I don't know, like they just, I feel like they just want to talk to me sometimes or, mm -hmm. you know, be here. And it's like, it's about the marketing. And you know, once you get that person through the door, it's about how you treat them. And I feel like that would be my move. If I was a new lash tech, I would go crazy with marketing. Like So the marketing pulls the men and the services with you. Yes, yes, you. that's mm -hmm. the key. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna switch gears dramatically. So we have a segment called Lash It or Leave It. It's okay. a little lash game. And this is where I tell you a scenario and you let us know if you would lash them or leave them. And I want you to explain why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna let you pick. I got three numbers. You could pick any number from one to three. Can you tell me the instructions again? <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm going to tell you the scenario okay. and you're going to tell me if you're going to lash them or leave them. Okay. All right. Number between one through 10? One through three. One through three, two. Okay. So you have a new client. Her appointment was at 12 p.m., but her ETA is 2 p.m. And you have a full book for the day, but she traveled from four hours away because she loves your work. And a lasher or a lever, and why? So if she's, I would lash her if she's willing to accommodate to my schedule. So at the end of my day, if she was able to sit for a few more hours and wait to be serviced, then I would definitely be open to servicing her. And I would, just to be fair and consistent with my policies, I would give her the late fee. Mm -hmm. So I would lash her and I would, treat her with the same patience and understanding and respect that I would as a client who arrives to their appointment promptly and early at all right. times. But just definitely enforce my policies and definitely make sure that it's outside of my, it's not interfering with another schedule mm -hmm. for another client. I definitely would do that too. Like put her at the end of the day. Yes. If I have time that day, I don't know. Right. Uh, <laughs> I'll be going after work. Yes. But um, that's definitely something I would do too. Yeah. Like a new client that, you know, we do have clients. I remember one time some girl was coming from like New York, but she told me like an hour and she was like, yes, yeah, I'm not going to get there on time. I'm like, it's okay. She was like, I'm going to turn around. I'm like, it's okay. Okay. But um, all right. So now you got one and three left. Let's go number one. Okay. So... It's your loyal client's wedding day. You know, she booked you for her lashes for the big day. But on the same day, Rihanna requests an appointment from you. Are you lashing your loyal client or? O-M-G. <laughs> what am I going to do? Because I love Rihanna. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I love my loyal client too. Ain't she getting married? That's a tough one. I gotta be loyal and, and lash my loyal client. <laughs> Am I crazy? Um, what would you do? Please. I really don't have like a real answer because I know I'm gonna do both their lashes. Well, no, I'm not sure about the loyal. No, I would be like, if it's the day before, if I get a notice the day before, I would tell my loyal client like, I would do you like early in the morning, and you know, like somehow so it doesn't work yeah i feel like i would have to like really just go crazy that day like really just flattery on the yeah something flying. crazy something gotta work something gotta work i don't care where i gotta fly to but no you, you're not it's you have to, you have to fit oh <laughs> like, I'm <making> fit. <laughs> if i'm thinking of like a loyal loyal client let me think 
Okay, I probably, in reality, this is what I would really do. I lash my loyal client. Well, I would tell my loyal client what's going on. Right. Right? I'm going to tell her, Rihanna. Mm. Rihanna called. And hopefully she feels bad. And, and I'll be like, you know, one of my girls can do you. Okay. Now, if she really wants me to do it, I'll do it. But I'll send one of my girls to Rihanna, maybe. Recommend somebody else to Rihanna. Somebody that I like. Oh, that's you know? decent. Yeah. yeah. Put them on. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, that's how you, that's how, that's how I would do it, too. Yeah. I just, for that to happen at the same time, that's wild. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't even do wedding lashes. Like, like I don't know. I've only done, like, two people's lashes right. for a wedding. And they come, like, the day before or something. So it's not, like, I don't know what, lashes are not really, like, a same-day wedding type wedding thing. Type yeah. Thing. Okay, I get So that's you. very rare. But maybe it's the day that you had to, whether it was the day before or not, right. like that day. You had to like, do it. Yeah. Right. And Rihanna was trying to get her relationship back. They might have to come with me or something. Something. All right. I would definitely try <laughs> to figure it out, too. But if I had to, like, pick one or the other, I would just have to do my little client. Like you said, I'm going to yeah. do Rihanna at some, some point. Because I'm thinking about, like, my favorite client right now. Like, I really like some of my clients. So yeah. it's like. That would be tough. I could just imagine their face. Yeah. You know? <laughs> All right, so the last one is a client that is always has like negative energy and she's complaining about the price when she comes, but she loves her lashes. You gonna lash her or leave her? I'm gonna lash her. Why? Because I really have had experiences with clients that have had negative energy. And if they have, I can usually pivot that. Right. Like. Maybe keep the conversation minimal or still check in with like vague questions. How was your day? Or um, just get an upbeat vibe going. Change the music in the studio. Mm-hmm. Make them feel good that they're here getting their lashes done. They don't have to worry about anything else that's going on. Not even assume that they're having a bad day, but just to like take the edge off of them because they probably need that. The last mm-hmm. sessions are yeah. therapy. Sometimes it's really like that though. I've had a couple people, that, but they like, they turn around. They turn around. That's yeah. why they love their lashes at the end. They feel good. Mm-hmm. They, they, they're glad that they came. And they always, they don't complain about the price, but they still going to pay it. That's and true. And probably you yes. too. So yeah. it's just like, girl, come on. We're going to have a better day. They maybe not be going well, but it's going to end a little different. I so, love that. Yeah, I would still lash them. And to wrap up our lash talk, what piece of advice would you leave with some lash tags for today? For today... I love how we both have, like me and you, have done different lanes with our within our lace business. Right. So I've tapped into like outside streams of income, mm-hmm. fitness, um, Airbnb, things like that, and you've expanded with products and mm-hmm. digital products within the lace industry. There's always, if you invest in your lace career, you'll always get something out of it, and there's always another investment to be made. Yep. So that's my biggest advice. And that's what I'm grateful that I've had their approach throughout my journey. Because even when things have gotten stagnant with my lash business, I've always still, it's always still giving me an opportunity to make another move. Right. That put me in a different position or another opportunity that, you know, helped me change my circumstance. So always, it's definitely a solid industry and investment. And you can always... Like I said, make a pivot, make another move to set yourself up. So yeah. what you put in with lashes, you definitely get out of it. I can say that. Mm-hmm. And lashes is just like the, it's literally like a lot of people start to, you know, I have a lot of friends in the lash industry that all took different streams. And yeah. I feel like lashes, you know, was the start to everybody like providing that service and then getting that money and flipping it, investing it. So like we're all doing different things, but it's like it all started from lashing, literally. Yes, it's like, the foundation. It's really yeah. the, if you are a lash tech, but you or you start as a lash tech, but you do something else, regardless, lashing is the foundation. Yes. So I think I always appreciate the aspect of being a lash tech, regardless of the ups and the downs or the slow times and the super book, you know, times. It always comes back to lashing. Yes. Mm-hmm. So thank you for coming on today. Thank Cheers so to our first me. episode again. That was amazing. Yeah. And let them know where to find you on social media. So my lash business is Deluxe Beauty LLC on Instagram. If you want to grab a copy of my ebook, you can follow my fitness page, which is Deluxe by D-L-U-X-E-B-O-D. 
And you can also sign up for personal training sessions through the link in my bio on my fitness page as well. So the ebook, the fitness page, and Deluxe Beauty LLC for your last needs. All right, y'all. That was our first episode of Let's Talk About It. Until next episode. <laughs> <laughs>